hear was your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, everything you desire. The Lord is pouring the blessing of God upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Supernatural freedom through Christ. Live from Charles de Gaulle Stadium, the Republic of Benin. A French-speaking West African country with its capital in Porto Novo. 22nd to 27th June, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily. Sunday service at 0700 hours GMT. And that's not all. There will be ministers, church workers and professionals conference with a theme. Fulfilling the ministry with heaven in view. Teenagers, campus students and young adults will be inspired to arise and shine at Impact Academy. Ministry is God's servant. The convener of GCK. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi. With global choir ministering from across the world and special guest music ministration by Dan Luten. Broadcast to the world live via satellites, radio and television, and all our social media platforms. GCK Season 3. Your time has come. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And Lord, I pray tonight, you open our eyes. Make us to see. Make us to understand. And Lord, we pray that today, you will help us to know what's in your heart. You are passing on to us in Jesus' name. Strengthen your people tonight. Enlighten your people tonight. Protect your people tonight. I will pray that all danger will be taken out of our way and will remain safe and secured until we reach Beulah land, the land of promise, the land of Canaan. Hold the hand of every brother and every sister, every child and every youth so that, Lord, you'll take us to that glorious place. In Jesus' name we pray. You can see now, God bless you. We come to our Bible study. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 15. By the way, for those who have not been following us uh, systematically, we've been studying from Matthew chapter 5. We've gone through chapter 5, chapter 6. And now we're almost concluding chapter 7. We're now in verse 15. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Anytime you see that word, beware. It's a word of warning. It means there is danger ahead. Beware. We can say, be aware and know that every road does not lead to heaven. Be aware there are deceivers that will point to the wrong way. Beware, be aware. Let's look at Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. And look at the use of this word, beware. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 9. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. It was a matter of life and death. And the prophet, the man of God, the faithful, true prophet, is sent to the king. And he said, be aware, be watchful. Beware that you do not pass this particular place because the enemy is staying there waiting for you. Verse 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of beware is a watch of warning and want him of 
and saved himself there not once not twice you see when you take note and you take heed and then you follow the word of the lord beware then you preserve your salvation you preserve your soul you preserve your inheritance philippians chapter 3 verse 2 beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of the concession I'm sure you've seen those signs before on some gates. Beware of dogs. Don't just rush in until the owner over there, the landlord, comes to bring you in. Beware of dogs. Otherwise, you could be beaten. Otherwise, you could be poisoned. Otherwise, you could have a deadly disease. Beware. And then it says, beware of evil workers. That means it's not everybody you meet on the street that wants to pass on a good thing unto you. There are destructive people. And it says, be aware. Be watchful. Take heed. Beware. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 8, anytime there is danger, we are warned and then we are told to beware. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you, destroy you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. It says beware. Lest anybody will turn your mind, your heart, your focus, your faith away from Christ and turn you to another way. Beware. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, Beware, that's the word again. You know that the deceivers will come. The scoffers will come in the last days asking, where is a sign of his coming? Because of that it says, Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. Now, that word, beware, sometimes when you read the Bible, there are two other words that are used, having the same meaning. The words, take heed, take heed, Matthew chapter 16. So it's either, it says, take heed, or it says, beware. We're looking at Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. Matthew 16 verse 6, G then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware. Those two things now combined together. Be very watchful. Look at the path you are taking. Open your eyes and see. And then think through what you hear. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Verse 12, then understood they how that he bade them not to be, not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now what happens? Suppose somebody does not take heed. Suppose somebody just lives his life. Suppose somebody says, I don't believe in that kind of negative utterance. All I know is that I'm sincere. And I want to give the benefit of the doubt to everybody on earth that they too that they are sincere. I don't want all this kind of suspicion that you have to watch, you have to beware, and you have to be aware that they receive. I don't want all that. 
all I want is positive talk. I don't want anyone in. Let's see if we let's see if we don't take care. We don't take heed. Second Samuel chapter twenty. In Second Samuel chapter twenty, I'm reading from verse nine. Second Samuel chapter twenty, verse nine. And Joab said unto Amasa, Art thou in hell, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel safe and secured with a man like this? He met him and he called him my brother. And he asked for his welfare. But remember those words. Beware. Take heed. Verse 10. But Amisa took no heed. Amisa took no heed. You know, to just count everybody as a friend. Everyone that wants to kiss you. Anyone that wants to befriend you. Anyone that wants to have fellowship with you. And then you throw away the words of Jesus. Beware. Take heed. Verse 10. But Amisa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again and he died that's the result of not taking heed the result of not being aware that there's, a, there's danger out there the Lord is talking about the spiritual danger the eternal danger the irreversible danger that can come upon a soul upon the citizen of the kingdom upon a follower of Christ, upon a disciple of the Lord, the danger that can come if that disciple will not take heed. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 7. Reading there in verse 15, now you understand, this is warning. And this warning is telling us that to protect our salvation, to protect our lives, and to protect a destiny that we need to be aware is not everybody that says they know the way of the Lord that actually knows the way of the Lord. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing and but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, Give this warning out of love. As a shepherd, he does not want us to be destroyed. And yet he knows there are ravening, destructive wolves. Therefore he said, beware, be watchful, be on your guard. Take warning. Christ is sounding this alarm. And giving this warning was motivated by perfect love on the basis of is perfect knowledge. Notice that. Perfect love based on perfect knowledge. He knew the danger ahead. And it will be no, uh, there will be no warning if there were no danger. Knowing the presence of false prophets, even in his own time, and foreseeing the rise of teachers and preachers of damnable heresy in our time. He gave the warning over and over. Not only himself, you find the warnings all through the scriptures. Beware then. If it was necessary to warn the people at the time of Christ, it is much more necessary today. Satan, the world, the flesh, and not the only dangers in the way of the believer. There is another great danger, the danger of being deceived by false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing. Therefore, it says, 
beware. Watch, be on your guard. We're dividing the study tonight to three parts. Number one, Christ's warning concerning false prophets. Number two, crafty wolves closed as faithful prophets. Crafty, deceptive wolves closed as if they were faithful prophets. Number three, they concealed wickedness of false prophets. Let's come to number one, Christ's warning concerning false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets. This one is not a suggestion, an imperative, a command. And if you have confidence in Christ, you have to take his word at face value. If you know that Christ knows the danger ahead more than you know, you have to take Christ's word seriously. If you know that Christ has given you this so that he can protect your life, you have to take heed to what the Lord is saying. Beware of false prophets. And then it says, they come to you in sheep's clothing. And that is just to present a nice uh, surface, a nice appearance. But then it tells us in what lid they are, ravening wolves. Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, it tells us that near the time of his coming, the false prophets will multiply. Matthew chapter 24 verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't trust in, you know, all these, anyone, so much that you push your Bible aside and just say, they have the truth. They know the truth. And that's the danger. And that's the mistake that the church made in what is called the dark ages. They didn't read the Bible for themselves. They didn't check up whether this is was so or not. A priest came. A preacher came. And he told them, this is the word of the Lord. And this is the way to heaven. And they just took it. And they didn't know. That it is not everybody that declares the way to heaven that knows the way to heaven. And yet Jesus said, so we don't come to another dark age. Another period of spiritual darkness. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. That's why the Lord is warning us and he says, Beware of false prophets. There will be many that will come. And they will come at every turn of the road. And they will deceive many. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders if you're looking for evidence they will try to show some evidence and even jesus christ calls the evidence they will show he called them great wonders and he called those things great signs well then the lord is telling us it's not everybody that is uh, producing some sign producing some wonders that's actually standing for him. It says, the mark of the true prophet is that he will show you the narrow way that leads to life. The mark of the false prophet, he will show you the broad way. And he will tell you, go ahead and enjoy yourself. That will take you to heaven. But the Lord says, even if those prophets come, and then they show you the broad way, and then they are able to affirm what they say with great wonders and great signs. Don't be carried away by the signs and the wonders. The signs and the wonders are good. If we have the narrow way that leads to heaven, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. 
and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect i pray they will not deceive you behold i have told you before it tells us in second corinthians chapter 11 Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'm looking at verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. That's always in the heart of the husband to the wife. Jealous over you with godly jealousy. That's always in the heart of the mother towards her daughters. And the mother is always saying, My girl, come here. You're going to school. Beware. That's how the father is jealous over his sons, of course, and his daughters too. My son, come here. Universities nowadays are filled with young people looking for extra power. And they get into their culture. I'm, I'm sending you out to go and learn. To go and learn the sciences or the arts. When you get there, beware of those societies you see every parent will want the children and every pastor every shepherd with the heart of love will have this jealous care over the members i am jealous over you with godly jealousy for i have espoused you to one, to one husband that i may present you as a chaste virgin to christ but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That was a concern in the heart of the apostle, and that is the concern in the heart of every Christian minister, every Christian leader. In verse 4, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus that's a concern. Another person coming, a false prophet coming, preaching another Jesus whom ye have not whom we have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit, that's a concern. That instead of having only the Holy Spirit, there is another kind of spurious experience of the Spirit. If ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel, a perverted gospel, a corrupted gospel, a damning gospel. If ye receive another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And then in verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That is, they will talk, they will act, they will dress, they will behave, they have the mannerisms of the true prophets of God and the true apostles. But it says they are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their words. I pray we will not fall into their hands. If we're not going to fall into their hands, we must beware. In the early church, they followed the trail of the true preachers they followed the steps of the faithful prophets of god the apostle paul will get somewhere he'll preach the gospel many people will come to the, know the lord immediately the false preachers will come in and then they'll begin to contradict what the apostle had laid down even in the time of jesus christ the pharisees were always always in every meeting and they were not there to sink in, to soak in, to accept what Jesus was saying. It was to preach their own error after Jesus Christ would have laid the foundation. That's why Jesus said, 
beware of false prophets galatians chapter one in galatians chapter one verse six i marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of christ unto another gospel paul the apostle with his team had gone to the province of galatia and had declared the true gospel the gospel of the grace of god the gospel of peace the gospel of life life eternal and then after he finished there and many people had come to know the lord and they gave their heart unto the lord wanting to follow the lord till the end of their lives then the false prophets moved in and they were able to convince those galatians and paul the apostle had about it and paul the apostle said i marvel i'm surprised that she has so soon removed here we are at the retreat the lord has blessed us am i right the lord has opened our eyes we have gone almost from the beginning of the bible to the end our preachers they have uh, they have made the word of god plain almost in every subject and then we have shared time together of going into the word of god and then sooner after for any of us to give our attention our ear to the false prophet to damage us to destroy us or to make us go astray in the wrong path that would be a tragedy the victory we have nobody will take it away from us and the triumph that we have in christ already nobody will take it away from us in jesus name but for these galatians paul the apostle said i marvel i'm so surprised that she has so soon removed from him he wasn't concerned about just following paul he was concerned they were not following christ again they were removed from christ who had saved them who called you into the grace of christ unto another gospel the seven which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of christ they'll bombard you with advertisement they'll bombard you with invitation cards they'll bombard you with free literature they'll bombard you with free recorded messages they bombard you with internet internet messages and all they want to do is to make sure that you go away from the narrow path that leads to heaven and it says which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of christ now in verse 8 look at how serious the matter is but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which were preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say i again so say i now again if any man no matter his qualification you see paul was very sure of the gospel he had preached paul was very sure of the purity the solidity the entirety of the gospel he had preached and therefore he said though we or an angel from heaven come to preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached already whoever that may be let him be accursed and then he wanted to repeat himself in verse 9 as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed and it wasn't paul the apostle alone that warned the believers of the danger of these false prophets let's look at second peter chapter 2 in second peter chapter 2 verse 1 
But there were false prophets also among the people there were in the Old Testament. Even as there shall be, not New Testament, false teachers among you. There shall be. This is definite. This is sure. And they will try to spread their poison, their erroneous doctrine. And now they even have a lot of opportunities. They don't have to come to you physically now. They can come through the radio, through the television. They can come through the papers. And they can come through the internet. And they can come through all these audio messages that they put on the internet. And the Lord is saying, beware, there were false prophets among the people in those days. And there shall be false teachers among you who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies. It is not everything you hear uh, that is supportive of the truth. It's not everything you hear that will nourish your soul. It's not everything you hear that will develop your spiritual life. It says that damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves sweet destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. You think if somebody is teaching error, nobody will follow them. If anybody is teaching false uh, doctrine, nobody will, uh, nobody will accept. Their churches will not grow. They will not have any success. The Bible says no. In fact, the false prophets draw more crowd. It says in verse 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness, Shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not? The point is, there will be false prophets. There are false prophets, but the Lord will protect us. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. This is John the apostle of love. You know, if you have love, you're going to warn people of danger. Warn people of danger. I, I, I know about uh, different people. I know somebody that saw a bottle of kerosene. Then there's a bottle of water. But because there is no label and they look alike, this individual took the bottle of kerosene and drank. And before he knew what, a lot was in the stomach. He created a great problem. You know, if you have a bottle of water, the water of life, and then you have a bottle of false doctrine, poisonous doctrine, but you don't know because there's no label. And then you just take the bottle of false doctrine and then you put it inside your spiritual belly you can die that's why the warning is there look at the label if there's no label there stop find out what's inside this bottle before you take it and the apostle of love will warn you and this is what john is doing and he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. You know, if you come over here, we've attended retreat, we've studied enough, you've taken a lot of notes. And I'm sure that a lot of us are also buying the recorded messages. There's a lot you can listen to after the retreat. But then to leave here and go to another place that will reverse everything you have heard, that will erase everything you have heard, that will contaminate everything you have heard. How wise will you be? Believe not every spirit, but try, test, examine, investigate the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the apostle of love alerting us, telling us many false prophets have gone into the world. And the Lord is warning us so that we will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. I said you will not be deceived. Who are the people that ought to take warning? The warning is necessary for sinners. 
who is already who is who are already accustomed to the broad way they're already accustomed to the broad way they're used to the broad way they find the broad way convenient and those uh, people must be aware that sh that broad way will lead them to eternal ruin eternal destruction not only that sinners who are thoughtless about spiritual matters the people just they live a carefree life i don't care anyone that comes and listen to them those who are thoughtless about their spiritual destiny those are the people and if you are there you're, you're a simple brother a simple sister a simple hearted man a simple hearted woman and anybody who comes to just open the door the lord is telling you tonight that attitude must change don't be thoughtless about spiritual matters number three sinners who took religious deceivers as their final authority you know some of us were too lazy to read the bibles ourselves were too lazy to buy the books that are available and to reach them were too lazy to listen to the message directly ourselves at a spare moment and we, we commit the destiny of our souls and into the hands of deceivers and we make them the final authority those are the people that ought to be aware not only that people who entrust their eternal destiny into the hands of ignorant leaders of religion ignorant leaders of religion you entrust your soul to them the lord is saying your soul is your soul and if you perish you are the one that will suffer for eternity don't entrust your soul to the leaders and to the preachers and the land who are ignorant of the fullness and the demand of the gospel be careful be watchful beware and then there are people there are sinners who have been awakened they are on the verge of decision they're saying i must do something about my soul I must do something about my salvation. I must do something about my destiny. At such a time, you are at the crossroad. Should you go to the right? Should you go to the left? You need this warning. Beware of false prophets. And then there are those who are concerned about their spiritual welfare. And you are concerned about the spiritual welfare of other people. Beware, be careful of the books you recommend, of the religious materials you distribute. Beware of false prophets, lest you think you are helping somebody on his way to heaven, and you are actually derailing them, deceiving them, destroying them. And then this warning is needed by new converts. They have just come to know the Lord. They're very thirsty. They want to hear anything anybody wants to say. Those new converts must beware of false prophets. There are believers suffering persecution. You know, when we're suffering persecution, your heart is very soft. Sorrow softens us. Suffering softens us. And we're looking for comfort from any direction. Anyone that will offer comfort, soothing words at such a time when there's persecution and pressure, and when you're vulnerable, and when you're open to any comforter, that is the time to remember. It's not everybody that comes pro uh, providing solution to the problem at the time of sickness. This is your sickness. What have you done? What has your church done? What have your brothers and sisters done? What have they done in the house fellowship at such a time when you are under serious stress because of the suffering of the sickness? That's the time you ought to be aware. Beware of false prophets. They'll come with solution. And then disciples of the Lord who are feeling the weight of the cross. You're carrying the cross and it's heavy. And the questions are rising up, arising in your mind. Should I go through all this? 
Is it actually necessary? This self-denial, this cross-bearing, it at such a time, you must remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beware of false prophets because they'll come to you and they'll say, how are you? Isn't this cross heavy? This self-denial, is this not too much? And this demand on your life, do you have to go through all this? And it's such a time when those sympathizers come. Yes, they'll sympathize. Remember, the false prophets, they have sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they're very dangerous, destructive, and deadly. And then the ministers, the preachers of the gospel, the preachers of the gospel. How we need to beware of false prophets because the danger is very much if the preacher, if the pastor, if the leader is contaminated, he will not be the only one that will be deceived. His congregation will be deceived. Deceive a minister. Deceive a, a preacher. Deceive a person that is uh, sharing the word of life with thousands of people. And all those thousands of people are in danger. That's why preachers will beware of the books they read. The messages they listen to. And they will not be looking for easy, cheap way to gather crowd so that you can stay on the truth. Beware of false prophets for the sake of your own soul, for the sake of the souls of many people around. Take it. Beware. Point number two. Crafty wolves closed as faithful prophets. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. They come in sheep's clothing. They're deceptive. They're crafty. They're clothed as if they were faithful prophets. Matthew, sorry, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Here is Paul the Apostle. Was actually rounding up now with these people. He administered to them and he called them together and he reminded them the fullness of the gospel he had declared unto them. And then he said in his mind, in his conscience, his conscience was free, no condemnation, because he had faithfully declared the word of God and fulfilled his duty. Look at verse 26 and verse 27. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, there's no doctrine I've not taught you from A to Z, from the beginning to the end. From the rudiments and the foundation up to the things that are meant for mature people. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. After that now he said, take it. Beware. Therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Jesus called the false prophets remaining wolves. And Paul, the apostle by the Spirit of God, called these same false prophets, he called them 
grievous wolves. They'll enter in. They will not even want you. They will not wait for you to come to them. They enter in. They want to enter into the house. Or maybe they want to enter into the church. But we will not allow them. But start ye, and of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. There'll be some of these people, they knew the way of truth, and they had been among the people of God. All of a sudden, they will rise up. They want to develop another ministry, another fellowship. They want to build another church. And then within, they begin to talk to individuals. All these things you are hearing, do you agree? All these things that we're learning, do you think they've told us the whole thing? They want to draw away disciples after themselves. That's the time you want to be on your guard. Beware. And it says in verse 31, Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. I say. Chapter 44, verse 20. I said, chapter 44, verse 20. You see these, the false prophets. You see what he do? In verse 20, he feedeth on ashes. He doesn't have real spiritual diet to take in. He himself, that false prophet, he has been feeding on ashes spiritually. A deceived heart has turned him aside. And he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? That's why the Lord is saying, We must be careful, beware. Second Thessalonians. You see, those uh, false prophets, something has happened to them. What happened to them? Their hearts are now adjusted to the false doctrine. And they're going to be declaring the false doctrine confidently. I see that were the truth. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love for the truth. That's their problem. That's a major challenge. They do not receive, they have not received the love for the truth. They don't like some doctrine. They don't like the word of God. They don't accept the way of the cross that leads home. And because of that, they cannot be saved. In verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. Now they're deluded. They actually now believe a lie. Really, seriously, with all their heart, they embrace, they hold on to that lie. And now they believe, really, that the broad way will still get them to heaven. They say, grace plus any kind of lie. Broadway or no Broadway, once that is grace, you'll get there. That's the problem. And they believe that to the core. And they will try to convince you. But Jesus said, it's only the narrow way that leads unto life eternal. And don't let anybody who has deceived himself, who has a hardened conscience, who has a a seared conscience who now believes a lie. Don't allow that person to come to you and say it will be all right at the end of the day. No, it will not be all right. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. All who do not believe the truth will be damned. No matter, no matter who they are. If we're going to be saved, we must accept the truth, believe the truth, and live by the truth, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in 
on righteousness. Now, Second Timothy, chapter two. Second Timothy, chapter two. We're looking at verse sixteen. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Have you noticed that although many people are religious today, and many people they'll claim to be born again with all their claim, ungodliness is increasing in every country in our continent and even beyond this continent. Why? Because of the deception of the false prophets and the way of righteousness is confused with the way of liberty. And it says they will increase unto more ungodliness. These are the people, they have charisma, they don't have character. They seem to have some gifts, but no grace. They appear to have what you call love, but no light. If a person has love, but there's no light, the light of the gospel, the light of the truth, they'll destroy us. They have some tenderness. You know, the way they have the milk of human nature. The milk of human tenderness. And they're caring and loving and hospitable. Tenderness without truth. And you know, people are sucked in. Because, you know, in our human nature, we need care, we need tenderness, we need love. And once some people can touch us with a tender hand, and then they can speak to us some tender words, we forget that it is not the tenderness that should be number one, it is the truth. In fact, uh, you know, uh, the way human beings feel, if somebody has truth without tenderness, Another person has tenderness without truth. You're likely to follow the one that is having tenderness without truth because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel secured. It makes you feel uh, you're catered for. But tenderness without truth will damn the soul. These people, they have hospitality without holiness. They can take care of people. They can be very much hospitable. And that's the deception. But the holiness is not there. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They are the people that have eloquence without enlightenment. Eloquence. They can sway the crowd. It's not only preachers that sway the crowd. Politicians too can sway the crowd. What we're looking for is not the eloquence. We're looking for enlightenment. Does it, it's a spirit enlightened by the word of truth. That's what we're looking for. Other people have worship without the word. Worship without the word. You know, you get into some places and uh, the worship will take you to the skies. You feel high. You say, this is wonderful. The way they worship. But then when it comes to the word, there is no word. Is it just the worship? And that's not just ministering to a feeling. And then you see, everything becomes sentimental. All that will not take us to heaven is by the word that we're going to get to heaven. You don't want to have fellowship without food. The food for the soul. And that's the reason we need to beware. And notice, when you get into a church, when you get into an assembly, when you get to a fellowship, what do you see there? Is the food for the soul, the bread of life? Is it there? Otherwise, you might just see that you are deceived. Prosperity without purity. What a great danger. Success without salvation. Revelation without righteousness. All these things can be very deceptive in religion. Beware of those traveling wolves in sheep's clothing. Destructive adversaries. Closed as if they had dazzling affection. Dangerous foes. Fears. Closed as delightful friends. Poisonous serpents. In the appearance of peaceful saints. 
cruel tormentors, closed as compassionate teachers, wicked murderers, closed as winsome ministers, messengers, determined destroyers, closed as devoted defenders. That's why the Lord is saying, beware, beware of wolves. They are wolves inwardly, whatever their outward pretense may be, they might look polished on the outside. Even when they pretend and pose as shepherds, they are looking for sheep to devour, not to defend, not to protect, and not to feed. And Jesus said, beware, you'll beware. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 7, point number 3. The concealed wickedness of false prophets. You see, there's wickedness at heart, and that is concealed. The concealed wickedness of false prophets. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Be aware, be watchful, take heed. Keep yourself, be on your guard. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And who can see the heart but God Himself? Many times we don't see beyond the smile on their faces. Many times we don't see beyond the keys of Joab. We don't see the sword that is hidden. Many times we don't see the keys, we don't see beyond the keys of, um, of this uh, man, Judas is carried. Many times we don't see beyond the superficial humility of Absalom. That's the reason we should beware. Because inwardly they are ravening wolves. We're looking at Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. Matthew 23, reading from verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Did you ever think about that? That these religious teachers, very zealous, very devoted, very much dedicated, and they pray every time at the corner of the street and in the synagogue, and they visit the widows so as to, they say they are caring for their spiritual lives. Did anybody ever suspect that these people were shutting up, closing the kingdom of heaven against the people? And as you see many of the preachers today, many of the prophets today, nice outwardly, do you know the intention in their heart? And then it says, ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. They will not go into the experience of genuine salvation. Neither will they allow the people that want to enter into that genuine experience of salvation to enter in. They will not enter in, into the experience of holiness and sanctification. Neither will they allow... Other people that want to believe it to enter in, beware of those false prophets. In verse 14, one to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for ye pretends make long prayers. Have you seen how people publicize their prayers, advertise their prayers? And then they will have all those uh, weather pictures or sketches and testimonies. They support that everywhere. Have you found the uh, testimonies of the people who are sinners but now they are saved? Testimonies of the people that are divorced their wives, now they have got their wives back? Have you got the testimonies of those who are criminals and now their lives are turned around? Have you found the testimonies of those people that robbed and then did not make restitution? Have you had the testimonies of the people that wanted to break the house of the home and the family of another person, but now God has delivered them? They are not into prostitution anymore. Only the miracle of uh, healing and, you know, God touched my kidney and God removed HIV AIDS and God did, and did this and God did that. That's all we had, all they advertise. But the Lord is telling us, all that, those things are good if they're real. 
but the real sin that takes us to heaven is this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Give us testimony concerning change of life, change of character, change of personality, change of attitude. But to see all these people, they went about making long prayers for a pretense. And the Lord is saying, don't let them catch you. Don't let them suck you in. Don't allow them to deceive you. No, make the first things first. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And after that, all these things shall be added unto you. Look at verse 14 again. Want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Want to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one disciple, one follower, one devotee. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. Verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? That's the danger. We will escape in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 10, Psalm 10, reading from verse 8. And you know, sometimes uh, you have to really have the Spirit of God. A false prophet, you say, is this one the one they call false prophet? Is so gentle, is so humble. And, and you know, the man did not know me. And I look at the man, everybody respects him. And he's saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, to me, this man is humble. Can this be a false prophet? I don't know. You must listen to what he has to say. You must listen to his message. And you must look at what is coming out of the heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Don't be deceived by the smooth, polished exterior, the superficial. Look at what's in the heart. Psalm 10, verse 8. Is seated in the locking places of the villages. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privileged search against the poor. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor when he draws him into his net. How does he draw him into the net? He couches, he humbles himself. You see that? He couches. He bends low. He appears humble. And he greets you with that kind of humility. It's the humility of Absalom. It's deadly. It's dangerous. It's deceptive. He couches. He humbles himself. So that the poor may fall by his strong ones. That's why you want to take heed. That's why you want to beware. So that you will not be deceived. I pray they will not catch you in Jesus' name. The intention is to kind of uh, make us turn away from the truth. The intention is to add us to their number. So that as they have deceived their own devotees, their followers. So that they can deceive us as well. They want to add us to their register. They want to count us as part of them. You are not part of them. I said you will not be part of them. You will stand for the truth for the rest of your life. Not only to stand for the truth, you will preach this truth yourself. Because I'm believing that God is raising all preachers and prophets and evangelists. Even in this retreat, the power of God will be upon your life. You have got the truth. And the fire of God is born in your soul. And you will arise and then you are going to even snatch the captives of those false prophets away from their captivity. And you'll bring them to the truth in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. 
This is why it's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. You have the truth of the Spirit. You have the Spirit of truth as well. So that when you declare the truth, and then one of these uh, false prophets want to contradict you, you'll be able to manifest the power of the Holy Ghost and arrest the situation. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 6. Acts 13 verse 6. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Look at that. Look at the name. Bar-Jesus. That's the son of Jesus. Look at the name. Don't allow the name to fool you. Don't allow the title to deceive you. Don't allow the position to deceive you. Don't allow the testimonies they give to deceive you. By Jesus, son of Jesus. But then we're told in verse 7, which was with the deputy of the country. Look at his position. Intimacy with the deputy of the country. Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerers, for so is his real name by interpretation. The other name, he used that for a cover. The other title, bad Jesus, he used that one just to project himself as a true prophet of God. But the real name, Elimas the sorcerer, was to them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Thank God for the Spirit of God. I said, thank God for the outpouring of the Spirit. The power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. In verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. And said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. The name by Jesus, son of Jesus, did not deceive Paul the apostle. He knew this one was a child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. He lost all his evil power. And all his program, plan, project, he wanted to kind of uh, derail the preaching of the gospel. Everything was stopped. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Well, the false prophets who have seen their identity. They might speak great swelling words of vanity, but they will not deceive us anymore. I said they will not deceive us anymore. We know that all those words, that, you know, they may gather some words together, raise up emotions of people and the feelings of people. We know it's all deception. We're looking for the truth. And if we don't find truth there, we're not going to be cajoled. We're not going to be deceived. But all those great swelling words of vanity. Second Peter chapter 2. In Second Peter chapter 2, we're looking at verse 17. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 17. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried about with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured, they entice, they deceive through the loss of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They give out a lot of promises. You'll be free. You'll have this. You'll have that. And meanwhile, they themselves are captives of the corruption they are trying to set people free from. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after 
they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein they escaped before they were saved before they were purged before they were living clean lives before but now they have run into error and they again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning that will not happen to you what are we to do what's our responsibility looking at the words of jesus christ what's to be our response what's to be our decision romans chapter 16 in Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren. Are there brethren here? Where are they? God bless you. I knew you raised up your hand. Brethren, brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ, citizens of the kingdom of God, pilgrims on our way to glory, I'll see you there. We're on this narrow path. And this is the narrow path that leads to heaven. And when you get there, you'll see the Lord. You'll see the angels of God. You'll see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You'll want to have some time, see Moses and Elijah. You'll want to see David there. You'll want to see those worthies of old. you want to see me there too. I'm sure you are praying for me. You want to see me there, I'll see you there too. But you know the Lord is telling us now we're doing well. Now we're in the right path. And he's telling us we shouldn't allow anybody anywhere to make us go away from the way that leads to heaven. That's why it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, now mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned, and do what? Say it aloud. I will avoid them. I will avoid the false prophets. Say that. I'll avoid the false prophets. I set my eyes on glory land. Nothing will turn me back. Let's rise up and pray. Nothing will turn you back. Want to see the Lord. Want to get to heaven. We don't want any false prophet to come and deceive us. We've come this far. We have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're children of God. See all the sacrifices that you have made. And see the price you have paid. See the consecration that you have made. See the work you have done. And see how far you have come. You are very near the gate of heaven. At this late hour, don't allow anybody to turn you back. Avoid them. Make up your mind. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, I will avoid them. You know the sound doctrine already. You are born again already. The Spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart to a child of God. A great inheritance is waiting for you in heaven. Don't allow the devil to turn you back from the way of righteousness. See all that you have endured. The persecution you have endured. The challenges you have gone through. See everything that has happened up till this hour, up till this moment. They abused you, they insulted you, they persecuted you, they denied you of your right in the family. And you kept on holding on. The grace of God supported you and sustained you. A lot of rewards are waiting for you in heaven. You don't want, uh, you know, somebody, a false prophet, a deceiver, a person who is not committed to the truth. You don't want a person like that now to turn you back. You know more than them. You have inheritance more than what they have jesus is your savior the promises of god are yours the holy ghost is your comforter the provision of the lord is yours 
You even have a ministry. The Lord has given you ministry and grace. Know how important your soul is. And know how the Lord has valued you so much. And he has drawn you to himself. You don't want to follow a false prophet that will make you lose all the privileges you have got in Christ. Avoid them. You know the truth already. Hold on to that truth. Don't add error to it. Don't add false doctrine to it. If there's any problem, don't allow the devil to use that problem to make false prophets snatch you away from the Lord. You have had problems before and the Lord solved them. The same God of yesteryears who solved the problems of the past. That same God is still alive. It will solve this one too. This mountain shall become a plain before you a child of God. Don't allow the temporary difficulty to make you open the door for false prophets. The grace of God is sufficient for you. The Lord is watching over you. He'll protect you. He'll preserve you unto his eternal kingdom. You will not lose your reward. Don't allow any false prophet to take you away from the good thing the Lord has done in you, for you, and through you. Don't allow discouragement. At a time of discouragement, our hearts are so soft that if a false prophet comes at that time, he may get us away. When we're looking for friends, for sympathizers, it's very easy for a false prophet to come and lend what they call a helping hand. But no, no. You'll rather suffer for a minute, for a moment, and wait for the right solution from the hand of the Lord. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly the ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm sure you are not too tired. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the enlightenment. We thank you, Lord, for the light of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for the way, the way to life eternal, the narrow way. And we'll put our feet on the way. And we're going to follow you. We'll not look back. The grace and the strength to follow through. Give to every one of us in Jesus' name. You have raised us up as believers. Believers that are conquerors, more than conquerors. We have the victory already. And we're triumphant already. And Lord, we pray, we'll be teachers of the word ourselves. And we want to be teachers. We'll not open our ears or give any attention to the people that do not know the truth that we know. Preserve us from the false prophets. Protect us from the false prophets. Help us by your spirit to always speak loud and clear within us when a false prophet is drawing near. And we pray, Lord, the good thing you have given us will keep until the final day. All these, my brothers and sisters, with our children, with our teenagers, oh Lord, will be in heaven on the final day in Jesus' name. The good thing you have given us, no false prophet will take it away from us. And your people will be getting stronger and stronger in the knowledge of the truth in Jesus' name. Preserve us until the end. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen.